Hi guys, it's Mel Miller here from Funky Little Shack and I'm here with Ryan Carter who is a mortgage broker and um, I've got to say I get a lot of questions from people asking me all, all sorts of questions about um, whether they can borrow money against a funky, uh, for a Funky Little Shack and um, so I thought well let's get those questions answered with Ryan here and uh, and get some education and information out there. So. So obviously, uh, look, you know, we're in this really changing times at the moment. We've got COVID-19 and the onset of this recession. Everybody's really fearful of that. Uh, we're, we've got people losing jobs, so we've got this rising unemployment and, and then that uh, inability for a lot of people to pay rents. I've got to say is I truly believe is a perfect, a perfect time to support your family and, uh, and, and get them a funky little shack in your backyard. I think I, I believe that the investment is um, is fantastic for families. It protects our families. We don't know what's going to happen with the recession. So I suppose the first question I've got for you, Ryan, is um, can you get a loan to put a secondary dwelling in your backyard? And, you know, how does that work? Yeah. Well, uh, firstly, thank you for uh, having us on, and uh, yeah, uh, looking forward to, to providing some information to, to your clients um, but you Thank can you. definitely borrow against equity in your home um, you can also uh, utilize equity based on the finished product or what, what the bank would refer to it as if complete valuation which is a valuation um, based on when your funky little shack is actually um, completed and, and there um, so typically you can actually borrow up to 80 percent of this value um, and so that also means that there would be no lender's mortgage insurance payable. Um, you can go a little bit higher if you need to, if, if um, there's a little less equity or you need a little more money. Mm. Um, typically, you can probably go on to, to about 90% for that. Okay, then, and um, so would you need a building contract for that? Yeah, the preference would, would actually be a building contract for the bank. So mm -hmm. what they would want is a fixed priced building contract. Right. Um, they'd want to see uh, the progress payment schedule um, in that, um, along with your plans and specifications. And yep. so what else would I need, like, um, to achieve that? So, what what do I need in, if I was going to go for a loan? Um, you know, what what are the types of things that I need? Well, I guess the great news is, like, to build your funky little shack, you know, the home loan is no different to any other loan. Um, so you need your identification, mm -hmm. um, pay slips or yeah. um, tax returns if you're self-employed. Yeah. Obviously your building contract, the, the bank will do a valuation. Um, and typically these days, the additional things that have come in in the last uh, couple of years would be um, savings account statements. They, um, they will look at your spending history for, for sort of three months. Yeah. Um, and also, um, you know, any liability, so existing home loans, personal loans, credit cards, typically um, three plus months uh, of statements on those with, with good conduct. Okay, so well, what about um, a, a lot of people now on these new government subsidies due to COVID-19, so, so we've got JobKeeper and we've got JobSeeker, um, can they be counted as income? Yeah, really great question. So um, a lot of banks will actually consider um, JobKeeper um, so the way that they'll look at JobKeeper is, um, you know, if your income was less than the JobKeeper payment prior to the COVID-19, mm -hmm. um, they'll consider this income for you, um, along with, you know, as long as you can provide a letter from your employer to say that you will be going back to, to work at, at some point when, when we're allowed. Um, if your income is higher than JobKeeper and you're not getting topped up, um, then effectively they can only use the 1500 So if you are on 2000 a fortnight, mm -hmm. the bank can consider 1500 a fortnight. So if your okay. affordability is still there based on the 1500 mm -hmm. they can definitely look at that. The other yep. interesting one is a lot of clients are pulling money out of their superannuation. So they're going right. to have, uh, you can pull 10000 out this financial year. Yes. And if you're still affected, you can do it you know, from the 1st of July, an additional 10000 um, the banks typically will not use this as income and will not typically use it as part of your deposit um, because it's only for when you're in financial hardship. So if you're in financial hardship, uh, the bank is probably unable to, to, to lend you further, further money until, until things change. Sure. 
So um, I've also heard that uh, at the moment the it's uh, it's it's more di is it more difficult or is it taking longer for a bank to actually come back and, and give people some loans? Yeah, it's a real mixed bag at the moment. So um, there are some additional checks and balances that are being done in the background from the banks, um, and some of the banks will have staff that are overseas, staff that are working at home, so they're really uh, understaffed at the moment. Um, so um, that's not every bank though. So we are probably finding that it, you know, it varies from one or two days from lodgement. You can, uh, there's a couple of banks that, that will have an approval out and then yeah. you know, right up to 25 business days to, to actually get your approval. Um, so it's yeah, okay. really dependent on Bank, yeah, it? yeah, it is like one or two days compared to five weeks. Yeah, so correct. I suppose it's it's definitely worthwhile finding out, um, you know, who, what banks are um, are taking the longer time or the shorter time, um, and probably a good a good question to ask um, either Ryan here or, or your mortgage broker if you've got one. Uh, definitely. So so what about um, the interest rates at the moment? So what can you tell us a little bit about where they're at and um, yeah. What's your typical interest rate? Yeah, um, it's a really uh, interesting time for interest rates at the moment. Yeah. So um, typically, um, you know, fixed rates and variable rates will be around about the same, but um, mm. at, at current, we're actually finding that variable rates for owner-occupied properties or home loans yeah. um, um, in the high twos. So it should start with a, with a two uh, for the majority of banks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then if you look at a two or a three year fixed rate, you can actually get them down to 2.09 to 2.29. Okay. Um, so very low twos if you're willing to, to fix your yeah. loan. So you can actually get those same interest rates even though it's a secondary dwelling on your property? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. During the construction okay. phase, um, most banks It'll have to be a variable rate to start with, mm -hmm. um, but you know there should be no loading on this rate. Typically, um, yeah. once the the dwelling is completed, um, you can then look to move to a fixed rate if you want to at that point in time. Okay, so uh, yeah, really really low interest rates, um, and you were just mentioning before too about about uh, different banks and they could be uh, slightly different interest rates. Um, and you know, if you really want to get a loan really quickly, and you didn't want to wait weeks and weeks for one of those longer banks, um, so, so can you just explain about that and the uh, and how that affects the interest rate, and what how an interest rate point would, um, how does that actually affect um, the amount that you're paying um, for say say a funky little shack was say two hundred two hundred thousand dollars? What we're sort of noticing is obviously interest rate is very important. People want to um, get the best interest rate that they can. Um, typically, what we are finding though is those banks that are only taking you know less than a week um, you know, to approve your loan, um, and they might have uh, I don't want to say less checks and balances, but um, yeah, less documentation to, to filter through and, and a little more user friendly. Um, might have an additional 0.1 of a percent over and above uh, another bank that's maybe taking that four or five weeks to, to get an approval. Yeah. On a $200,000 loan, yeah. um, that would effectively be $200 per year. Right, that's oh, it. so it's nothing. It's nothing yeah. and it's also- Like $4 a week or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. correct. Yeah. Um, and it's also something you can negotiate later. So oh, okay. even though your loan term could be 20, 30 mm. years, you're not stuck there for 20 or 30 years. Mm. Uh, typically, people review their loan every two or three years. Mm. So, you know, it could be, you know, over two years, it's $400, mm. but you have your approval a little quicker. Yeah. They might have a great construction process, uh, making things a little bit easier for you and, and yeah. less stressful. Yeah. Oh, that's really great information. And we definitely have a couple of clients that have being a bit frustrated, they want to get in, they've got they've got to house mum or they've got to house their son really quickly and they're frustrated because the bank's taking too long. So um, it's good to know. As long as they're in the ballpark, yeah. we tend to find same for our clients is yeah. that um, it's a stressful time. So if yeah. you can get it over and done within a week, yeah. um, sometimes it's worth that yeah. 200 dollars extra. All right, well, that's great. So thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming here and uh, and explaining all this to our, our viewers. And uh, yeah, it's really good information. And I'd, I'd love to have you back for some more, more questions along the line. So yeah, thanks, Mel. Cheers. Yeah. Elbow.
Perfect. <laughs> Cheers.